All right, so this is the final assembly of those parts that I was just talking about. And here are the key things to look for. The, in the, the fit between the aluminum spacers and the white steel powder coated part from Vans, you want to make sure that those fit nice and flat. You don't want any kind of a gap in here. You want that interface to be flat and tight. And you want that on both, on all four of these corners. You can kind of look around at this and see that that interface is uh, smooth and flat. There are no gaps. The other thing is, in order to accomplish that, you do not want to draw these together using the bolts. All four of these bolts I was able to spin in by hand very easily and I didn't have to crank on the bolts to pull these parts together to close up any gaps in here. These came together really nice on their own and I was able to run all four bolts all the way down by hand and then all I had to do was put a wrench on to tighten the bolt. I didn't have to draw anything together. The reason I say that is these holes here need to slide on the brake. If you start cranking on these bolts to pull all these pieces together, you can impart a partial bend on this bracket and it will not slide correctly on the caliper. So you want, just like I've always talked about with other things in the past, you want these to come together with no stress. You want everything to just fit nice, run the bolts in by hand, and then just tighten the bolt. You don't want to rely on the bolt to draw things together and potentially start to bend and warp things. So again, when you do that, when you do the chamfer and you work on the four holes, you should be able to get this together no problem. I did have to take one of these back over to the uh, drum sander attachment that I have on my um, drill press and put a little bit more of a chamfer on it because I noticed when I started to run these bolts in by hand, it wouldn't quite go in all the way. It started to bind. And when I was looking, I noticed that there was a gap in here that was not closing up. So I took it back over, put a bigger chamfer on it, brought it back, and it went together real nice. So now that this is correct, verify that your orientation is correct as far as which side of the white piece that the brake part mounts to. Make sure that you have your fore and aft correct, and then you put your brackets on. Once you have that oriented, you have your pieces together correctly with no stress, now you can start to fit this bracket on top. And this is where, like I said, I'll just pick a hole, I'll put a bolt into that hole, and then I'll just modify the other three if I need to, to get this to bolt in place. So that's next. Talk to you guys here in a second. Alrighty, so here we are actually on the airplane and I'll go over a few more things that I've noticed. First off, you cannot bolt this aft or this inside bracket to this assembly because if you have this bolted together you cannot get your caliper in place. So you can have the bracket attached to this sub-assembly very very loosely, have the bolts almost completely out. You can slide this whole assembly then onto the axle, leave this nice and loose, and then you'll be able to fit your brake caliper in place. So this is where you want to check that your brake caliper slides nice and free. Again, you don't want to crank on these bolts to draw every, everything tight and end up imparting a partial tweak on this bracket. So just make sure that your uh, caliper slides nice and easy, no binding, and you should be able to fit it in as long as this back bracket is loose, you should be able to fit this in nicely. 
And now from the back side, you can go ahead and, and tighten these bolts for this bracket here. All right, so now I am going to tighten up these bracket or tighten up these bolts for this bracket here. I'm going to bring the brake disc and the wheel in place, temporarily bolt those together, and then I can uh, reform my brake line and permanently install my fitting here. I've already got that done on the other side. I'll show you that real quick. Again, this is all just temporary at the moment. So on the wheel assembly, down inside here, down inside there, there's a spacer. And I'll go over this when I get over to the other side. But there's a spacer in there, your wheel assembly. There's a spacer here, and then the nut. This is the brake disc and it's held on with three bolts to the back side of the wheel and there is my brake line fitting and then my brake line so at this point you want to be sure that your brake line is inside of this bracket you can imagine that the wheel fairing is going to lay on this face and this face so you don't want your brake line sticking out beyond that and that's about it. So let me grab these pieces parts. I'll take them over to the other side and I'll, I'll put those together real quick and see how everything fits. So here are the spacers that come with the Sky Designs kit. And this is the new uh, nut for the axle that they also supply. A couple of quick things. Of course, you'll notice that these two spacers are completely different. This one is larger and it's got these cutouts across here for the axle bolt to clear and you'll also notice on the inside it's machined with a shoulder you can see that there so this slides on the axle this van supplied part will fit down and rest against that shoulder it will bottom out against that shoulder and then of course the cutouts here are to clear the bolt on both sides fore and aft. The thing that I had noticed with both of these is it does not want to easily slip over the white powder coated supplied part from Vans. So I don't I don't it seems like maybe they just did not account for the powder coating thickness. But it, it it will go on. You'll have to persuade it on. That's what I had to do with the other side. I just took a wood block and, you know, just went around it and, and basically tapped it into place. I'll have to do that with this one as well. But this one should go on. Once you get your, your cutouts aligned with your bolt, this should be able to uh, be pounded into place. The outside spacer, again, is just a machined piece of aluminum. But it also has... A wide groove cut through it. I don't know how well that will show up on camera, but it has a groove that is machined across it on one side. The other side is flat, and I'm assuming that's nothing more than for the for the uh, the nut itself to fit into. So this spacer, this flat side, will go against the wheel bearing. And the nut then, as you screw the nut into place, the nut will nest inside of that cutout. Something like that. Again, don't know how well this is going to show up. So at this point, my sub-assembly is on. I've got my through bolt axle attachment bolt in place with the appropriate washers. I will put on, I will bring this back plate up and run these four bolts in to secure that. I will run this spacer and seat it all the way. Then I can bring my wheel assembly over and my, my brake disc 
put those together, put on my outside spacer, run this nut in nice and tight, and just make sure that the brake disc aligns nicely with the caliper. There's no binding. There's no weird stuff going on once that is in place. And then I'll leave that in place and I'll go ahead and I'll run this fitting in all the way and re-bend this brake line. All right. Let me knock out that. I'll talk to you guys later.